It's been a couple of days since I've been able to uh, sort of update you uh, here. Anyhow, I've done a couple of vlogs, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about the dungeon scene and where I'm at. I uh, had a big, long internet out outage that was about 26 hours long. That was just the other day, and then yesterday I had a power outage for a few hours right at the time when I would normally do a video. So anyways, I'm, uh, I'm back for hopefully for a good a lengthy time and uh, this is really going to be a mix of, of things that I want to talk to you about so this is what the dungeon scene is looking like right now and I'm actually I'm just revealing everything materials modeling uh, my current state so I figure why should I why should I hide it um, let me tell you what I've gone ahead and done and we'll have another couple of views let me just turn your attention up here to the shelves all right we got two shelves here uh, I've got some books now, and there's one book down here. We'll have a look at those in a bit. So those were modeled and then textured, and textured in Substance Painter. I've got some specimen uh, jars here, and uh, I've got a piece of bone in this one. I don't know how easy it is for you to see that, but we can have another look at that in a bit. Um, I've obviously got uh, a wall texture. Now, this was made in Substance Designer. And this is not necessarily the final one. This was actually uh, the test one. I may decide to just keep it. I, I am getting quite busy and I do have the requests keep coming in, etc., etc. Et so I may have to settle for it, although I kind of wish I wouldn't. But sometimes we have to do this. Um, over here, you can see there's one, two. These are the morgue doors that I mentioned. Uh, in a in a previous vlog where either the the dead bodies of prisoners here go or I'm not quite sure what they are um, we can have a little look at that eventually I want to talk to you just about the texturing of, of, of this part of this in substance painter uh, throwing a book down here a couple of things here I still have a gem this white thing here that I haven't textured them I'm, I'm not sure if the gems are gonna make it in but you know we've got the portal of course the tentacles um have yet to be textured and uh, the floor i did in substance uh, designer and then a little bit in substance painter i'm hoping to talk to you about the, both the floor and the wall uh sometime soon uh there's a bird cage over here that's broken up i want to talk to you about and some hooks in the ceiling for something else potentially or they're just there I've changed the uh, the design a little bit on the torches, and I put candles in there. There's um, uh, an irradiance uh, illumination there. We could talk about sometime. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's let's uh, let's close that and hop into uh, the scene. And here it is, and uh, we are starting to get a pretty crazy uh here let's have a look actually i haven't looked at the statistics all right geez i'm only at uh, 10 percent of uh of a million so that's not too 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 bad although my uh, computer is struggling a little bit with uh this and having open you know substance painter over open sometimes and substance designer uh and this and that but here you can see what i've got i've also made uh this piece here here, I think what we'll do is I will try to go into a material preview and uh, this restraining thing here I've got some bottles uh, I haven't really grunged them up or anything uh, those were just glass in blender uh, for some reason I was having some trouble with substance paint or glass uh, in blender I wasn't happy at all but I've got some books here I'll show you how to model those really simply it's easy stuff and uh, done a little bit of, of texturing. Uh, just nothing much because you're not going to be too zoomed in. Even there, though, they look all right, although the paper is not really paper. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, and, of course, I spent a bunch of time on sort of temporary lighting and some of it, and maybe I'll just keep it. There's the, the doors, and you can see this is a texture here, so I thought maybe we could talk about that. If I don't get to everything in this video, we'll do some in the next video. Um, that's it. I'm just filling it up with things that I think make sense. Oh, I didn't realize there was a gem back there. Uh, there's that portal that we did the other day. I don't know if you saw these lights. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them or not. I might. And the floor... 
and over here the bird cage. I wanted to talk to you about the bird cage and the hook in case you've never done a hook and maybe the book and maybe that's what we'll do in, in this in this one. Uh, I do have some thoughts on a couple of more things and oh yeah and I put the ceiling in the wood ceiling here with some supports and um, yeah and that's that's where we're at. All right, so uh, what I thought I would do is I'll, I think maybe I'll open a new scene and we can talk about a hook, maybe the bird cage, maybe a book, maybe a little bit of texturing. And I, I'll still do a couple more videos in the series. You know, I, I said about the, uh, about the walls and I, um, you know, I had promised to show you how, how I would do that in Substance Designer, and, and I can still do that. I really would like to get away with this wall. I could spend forever uh, uh, doing textures, and uh, I really enjoy it. But I do have to move on to other projects. And uh, you guys know I'm busy with my kids and my dogs, and, uh, and I only have a couple hours to do this. And by the way, my wife is uh, also a musician, as I was. And so she's upstairs in our studio and she's playing drums and she's playing tambourine and singing. She's recording a, a cover version of Girls Just Want to Have Fun, you know, that old Cindy Lauper song. And so uh, you may hear some of that in the background. And the kids seem to fall asleep too uh, when, we're, when we're recording uh, anyhow, which is great. All right, so uh, yeah. And when I get to the end of this, I will talk to you about the story. What is the story with all of this? by the way there is a hanging hook and so maybe we will talk about the hook all right i'm going to delete that <laughs> that's just hanging in the ceiling for some reason all right so that's uh, that's what we got there and i am going to go into a new scene where we'll just model a few things i'm just going to get rid of all of that and turn on move and let's see if i can get my screencast keys going and yeah so um with respect to the bird cage uh, i did a hook holding it and i've got a couple hooks in the ceiling as i said i'm just going to choose 20 like some like 22 vertices and i'm going to look from the front i'm going to rotate x90 and we'll make a hook here so we'll get rid of um you know just a couple of let's see, let's see what happens if we get rid of those ones that could probably be okay all right so open here comes around and down to that one then we'll press e to extrude pull that down certain ways and then let's take that vertex and just not leave it straight let's go shift control b and pull split it like that and put one more in so <laughs> seems like a saturday night so we've got that and then all we need to do here well you could do a couple of things you could try you could convert that to a curve let's do that and uh, just bring up the uh, geometry bevel here that might be probably the easiest way to do that i mean you just get it to whatever thickness you want and then say okay i'm i'm good with that and uh, i just have to be careful about crossing over here well, we can move that uh, move this one down and we can adjust that all right so let's say we want that let's come back up here to the resolution up at the top where it says 12 switch that to something like three or four and then convert to mesh and let's come in here and see and if we don't like that i could take this and let's go gg and edge slide move that down a bit take this one gg and just move that down a bit and it looks pretty bulky so i'm going to do control one or control two or whatever shade smooth it and we'd have a hook uh, and then i would close these and the way i would do it is i would just have to make a face and control b all right and have three or so and uh, this part probably goes into a wall somewhere so i wouldn't i wouldn't worry about that now if you were making a bird cage i thought i would talk to you about that anyhow um i'm just going to bring that up to say there and uh, let's build it from actually let's bring it a little higher this is build something uh, relative to that hook size so uh, the way i'm going to do this i'm going to use a uv sphere and um you know you don't want the bird escaping but i was thinking it's a big kind of a bird so um how about 
20 and 10 or something. Let's just try 20 and 10, see if we get uh, the right stuff for that. I'll just increase the size of that. All right, I'm gonna go into wireframe and one for vertex selection, box select the bottom here, delete those, shift control, uh, what do I do here? Sh shift alt and click eh? the muscle memory you just start to remember and then you forget what what you're doing you just know how to do it's like walking down the stairs or sometimes driving um i'm gonna pull that down to like that i'll put a few more and uh let's uh actually we're going to be deleting some of these i think but let's let's just copy that shift d to duplicate it pull it down to break it out let's just make the base of, of this right now i'll just extrude down and have to make a face pretty exciting you can do anything fancy you want i'm going to bevel that uh I'll, i'm going to leave that there and uh let's see let's come in here and delete that one and then in edge selection number two let's see do i want all of these Make it a nice tight bird cage. I may have had them a little bit. I may have done every second one on a higher poly um, UV sphere. I don't remember actually. So many things have been going on. But I would take those and key to break them out. So I have those separately. I'm going to come back in here. And I think we will start. Let's put another one there. And then let's just, let's just roll up and uh, have a look that's that's pretty equal like right there uh i am going to want a space yeah we'll just go ahead all right so i'm going to take all of these now and p to break them out so what have i got i've got those and then wait, let's see let's uh hide those and i got those i gotta hide those i, I can get rid of that i'll teach Bring it back there. There's my there's my cage essentially, and what I'll do now, and I might need an extra one, is I'm going to convert those to a curve. So with them selected, let's see here, yeah, with those selected, I'm going to convert to curve, and I'm going to choose. I'm just going to slide that up and start making it visible. Okay, so 0 0.104. Okay, and I'm going to take these ones and convert to curve as well and that was a 0 0.104 right now that might be too thick so uh 0 0.085 just settle on that because we could be here all day 0, 0.0 and i often am to late at night when i should be sleeping working on this kind of stuff I'm going to scale that in just so it's underneath a little bit. We can shade smooth. Take these ones, shade smooth. All right. And I take this thing and bring it up and, and out a bit. Uh, I'm going to give this some thickness by E and Alt S and pull and just do something like that. And then I'll just scale it in a little bit so it looks like these things go into it. And then I will take these edges here and Control B and bevel just with the three. I'll shade smooth that. That may not be all that high poly. Yeah, that's actually fine. Um, yeah, something like that anyhow. And these still might be a little bit too big. All right, 0 0.08. And we'll settle on that. We'll just say it's a big fat bird if, it's, if it looks not right. Uh, let's come up to the top here before I do something with these. Yeah, that's probably still too wide, but you get the idea, though. And I'll just bring in a circle. Uh, it doesn't have to be 22. Again, I'm putting on subdivisions, and some of you may not like may not like that. It becomes higher poly very quickly. But um, and then just do any design that you you like, or use references or something. So I'm just going to come up in, and you know I'm just going to do something. Uh, this is all I'm going to do. It's going to be very simple. Um, actually, that, yeah, like that. Okay, I'm going to have to close that off, and I'll take this. Maybe I'll scale that in. Um, 
I'm going to extrude that down a bit after make a face and let's just bevel out right now and let's just bevel this I'm going to want to have a bevel in here where it joins you know those two things there and we'll bevel both of these I'll bevel them more so it's a bit round more rounded and I'll give a little bit of bevel of that and I'll shade smooth and then control one and see how it looks yeah it looks all right take that down do, do something like that or you can have them join underneath if you don't like that look let's see maybe it looks better like that I think it might okay let's take our hook and bring it down and then scale it and uh, let's turn on the cavity shader because things will look better in fact let's turn on both here and slide these up I don't always go all the way to the end I just bring them up and maybe we'll go for this as well and by the way is everybody playing nice you're not playing nice um, you can do a little swing in there if you want but um, we'll start with that and then once you're happy with it um, then let's say okay let's start to convert this over let's go for three and let's uh, convert that to a mesh and let's take this one and go for three in the resolution and convert that to a mesh okay good so far and then find a place where you say you want to have a, a um, you want to have a door for the bird let's see can i grab that much can i grab any of this or do i not have any vertices down there yeah. so what i'll do is i'll just throw some vertices in in fact i'm going to just focus on that it's a little bit easier to see ah now i see what i've got okay how about let's use bisect let's bisect and this just uh dread no Let's do that again, select, bisect, and pull through, and I can scale it in the Z to straighten it, SZ0. So I got that now, I'll go into wireframe, and actually face selection, and see, maybe I'll paint, well, I don't need that much, do I? How much do I need? Uh, let me have a look here. If I get rid of those, uh, I got those on the back, do I? All right, so we'll do this. Okay, shift alt and click. Ah, let's just get rid of those. Let's just get rid of those faces. And let's, uh, uh, where, what is it? Alt H, no, slash key. Let's bring stuff back and see. Mm, I think it's too much. Get rid of these for a second here. I think it's too much, so yeah let's do this then those and those let's try uh, bridge edge loops oh I may have gotten some that uh, was not good all right shift alt and click them <laughs> And shift alt and click them. That's a bit better. So in that area, right? Okay, then uh, let's get a door in there and then we'll cut the other areas. Uh, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select and it doesn't matter if it's too much. In fact, it's probably better if it's too much than too little. Shift D to duplicate it and pull that up to break it out and let's just hide the subdivision for the moment i don't know i mean if any of you are going to be doing a bird cage anytime soon um let's say we get rid of that face and i guess we're going to get rid of that face as well aren't we okay i'm going to take this and I'll just pull it down That's probably okay. I think that's what I want. 
Um, may have a subdivision on it, so uh, I might want some more segments. So I'm just going to extrude. Uh, actually, I'm going to alt. Uh, I'm going to E and Alt S and pull pull it in like that. I can tell that it's flipped, so I'm going to put those back and let's see in a subdivision there. Yeah, maybe I'll just go ahead and um, split this and bring it up. Do this kind of thing. Might put two on. You know. But uh, I'll drag an edge put that way in this way. So we have a door, and uh, let's uh, let's bring those back and see what we need to do here. Let's just select uh, these ones and this slash key, and then let's come in here and see yeah we can get rid of uh, the ones behind so i'm just shift alt and clicking with my um on, on face selection and hopefully it's not too long i'm just going to do it anyhow and uh if you ever make a bird cage you can decide for yourself uh, how big you want that looks like a pretty big door and and you know a lot of times you know they they have uh the mesh on it as well but i just wanted to, you know i didn't otherwise you can barely see it it's just all spider-man ish and i wanted to have a, a solid section so i thought it was more interesting to look at <laughs> not that it's all that interesting to look at anyhow but um what did i just do i just duplicated that so let's not do that let's just uh, bring the 3d cursor there and then i'm just going to bring in a simple cylinder and you can do any kind of uh of a hinge or whatever that you want uh, I'm just gonna do uh, what I think I did and feel like doing for you so something like this and then I'll scale in Z and you can have one or two and scale shift Z maybe and you can work on this door you can make it better than that I'm just doing this quick to, to, to get things started and really if you're at a distance it's not gonna make much difference I'm starting to understand the idea of working smarter. Uh, uh, I don't always do that, but I'm starting to understand why, you know, now that I've got my kids and I've had them for a number of years, and as they get older, I don't have as much time. Because really, they're energetic, and I'm in my 60s, and uh, it gets hectic. Uh, I don't know how many I had in there, but uh shade smooth uh okay i'll throw one else up here that's actually probably not the best uh hinge but you could do something like that and i'll just duplicate it down and so there's there's just a couple there so you know it, if you just look at it quickly it kind of looks like a bird cage kind of yeah okay maybe i do need to at least do this and i think that door is a little bit thick so anyways uh that's the general idea and uh what do we got did I, I did what i needed to do and really it's it's not as it's not as smooth as i would like it to be so i would have a tendency to throw those on and just blow a bunch of polys but you know you have yourself a bird cage and what i did then did in uh in this image here is i went in there and i broke it and swung the door open and as if as if everything is in jail here or uh the old uh, canary in a mine shaft whatever and uh, i just thought it would look a, a, bit, a little bit apocalyptic and stuff now by the way you're going to notice uh, i guess i just saw that the the sand is is missing uh here uh, as opposed to what i had in the uh, other one because i'm still debating you can put a little handle on there but anyways there is there is a bird house cage not house although i guess some birds live there it's pretty sad really uh and you could decide if that's too much wire not enough wire and too thick as well but anyways that's uh that's that so okay you go you go over there not not there you go over there uh shift shift z back to the middle okay a quick book uh i've done books before and um there's different ways of doing it when we're looking at the top whatever it doesn't really matter okay i'm going to bring in a plane and uh i don't need to make this too big uh, let's see if i look at the front we'll look there okay let's extrude it up and give sort of thickness of a book and then just get the the dimensions of it 
in fact let's uh, rotate x 90 so we're actually looking at a book and it looks like that all right so there is our book uh how do i want to do this i may just take these and round them a little bit like this and add a few more segments and it already looks like a book in my opinion and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select these faces and i'm going to press i to inset and pull it in a little bit so we can start to see the cover and then i'm going to press e and alt s and pull and that's going to pull it in something like this it's more of a cartoon book and and at this point right now i will probably add a material and i would call it paper and don't forget to assign i do that all the time control i to invert the selection plus to create a new one new and i'll call it cover and assign and deselect so we have at least added our materials and now i'm going to bevel this i'm going to shift alt and click there uh, and that should have got everything sometimes it's hard to see with that mad cap and shift alt and click this is my personal uh way of doing it um in terms of beveling a lot of people maybe wouldn't but i i will so there's three i'm gonna go for five and then I want to also bevel all around the cover. So we'll have to see if we get everything. And I don't know what we do down there. Okay. I mean, you could try with just the bevel modifier and see if you prefer it. But I'm just going to commit to it because that's, that's how I do it. Uh, Control B and pull. I don't need five. I could probably get away with three. And... Okay, I won't shade smooth yet, so I can still grab the cover, right? If I uh, come in here and go uh, select, I've got the cover, deselect, and select, I've got the paper, and deselect, okay, good. And then I probably want to do an indent, and so for that, I would probably use I, I mean, I can't get a, an edge loop in there now because of the end guns, because of the, how I baffled it. So I will use um, bisect, and I'm going to just drop an edge loop there and scale X zero. And it did go all the way through, so that's fine. And I'm going to take it, and I might get rid of that edge on the paper after and I'm going to control B I'll, I'll split I'll make a little thing here and I may even pull it back and I think I will let's see what do I do here I don't know um, I could try just scale Y let's see what that does I, you know what, before I do that, I really need supporting edges. So I think what I'll do is I'll scale this in the X. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll come back in here in the middle and Control B. And then I'll do that. I'm going to scale in the Y. And maybe even scale in the X a little bit more. But see, that may be too much. <laughs> no kidding. That was too much. And so I'm going to come back back to that okay and I'm gonna scale in the Y and I'll pull back out a little bit and okay fine fine so what we'll do now let's not panic is let's grab these and let's scale these in the X pull them out and you just get a hint of that that may not be all that visible, but I'd probably go over that in Substance Painter. In fact, now that I've done that, I almost feel like I should grab it again and scale in the Y. Hold Shift. Just a little bit more. Let's try Shade Smooth, and it's not going to look good yet. We're going to get some shading errors, but we do have that. So I'll just come over here and do what I would usually do is um, Weighted Normal, and Normal's Auto Smooth. Okay. So, and let's go back to our mat cap. Now, have we ruined the paper? Not, not really. I mean, we can, we could come in here. We could separate the paper out. 
which might be a nice thing to do. We could take all of the pieces of the paper and P to break it out. And then just let's just focus on the paper for a moment. And, you know, if you don't like that, we can easily straighten that. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm about to delete those edges and it's going to pop back out, I think, a little bit. Let's uh, dissolve those. It popped out. Let's dissolve this one. Let's dissolve all of them. And the paper will just push into the cover, but, you know, we don't have to have extra edges if we don't need them. No one's going to know. All right, you can't tell. It looks like the paper might go in, but it doesn't. But anyways. But, I mean, that's the basic book right there. And then and then texturing is, is another thing, which we could talk about. Um, maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll save this. I'll save this file with the bird cage. And then often what I would like to do is, uh, you know, just put it in a, in its own collection, right? Uh, so that I can it just more organize. I might even label those things. And, um, yeah, this just looks better and it's easier. Uh, I'm going to uh, just scale that a little bit bigger. And we'll have those two things there. So we got a hook, we got a bird cage. Yeah, this is too thick, all right? Although from a distance, you know, if you make it too small, if it's from any distance, you're just not gonna see it. It's And that is a huge waste of polys. If we just focus on that, if you can't see it, you've wasted it. So that's why I tend to exaggerate it and make it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. That's just my personal thing. And then, you know, you could put a label on this. You could grab, uh, I, I probably wouldn't grab that one because it's rounded. Um, oh, maybe just to bring a new one in. Uh, either putting a label on this or just doing it in a uh, in graphics program, whatever. But just to show you that uh, that I can make a label. And you can too. This is like now, you're, this is your science notebook, your specimens, right? Um, all right, you want me to use uh, Solidify? I will. All right, just so that I can control it a little bit better. Did I do it? I did it. I'm going to leave it at that for the time being, and we will come back and look at a few of the other objects that I have modeled, and I will talk to you about the texturing of the book, the texturing of that morgue door, and uh, a few other things and eventually we'll look at a little bit of substance designer as we get very close to wrapping this up so you could probably expect that the next time i'm back probably tomorrow night uh, 24 hours or so from now um, i will probably have another update or two another couple of uh, things in the scene as i get close to the end so if you're with me still and you've been with me since the beginning thanks so much for doing that and persevering and um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.